What's going on YouTube, man? I'm back with another reaction video. I'm going to be reacting to a video on David Bumble's uh, page called, I think, Cybersecurity Roadmap 2022. And honestly, I've never heard of this guy. What I've been doing is just typing in cybersecurity in the browser with a search feature in YouTube. And I've really been trying to see like what's out there to react to. Now, I like it's like a longer video, so... I'm not going to react to the whole thing. I'm probably going to skip around since they have it broken in down into chapters. But I just want to see what some of the information is out here that people are getting because people get a lot of mixed information. And I try to highlight what's good information and what's not so good information. So let's get to it. With John. John, welcome. Thanks so much, David. It's great to be here with you. So, John, it's 2022 and... What I really want to do at the start of this year. All right, I ain't going to do it. As y'all can see, it's like long. So I'm going to skip this right here. First things to learn. I don't know these guys, but, you know, you've both seen Nas. Well, look at, I, like that, I like that bookcase back there, man. Let's look. Let's go. Is try and pick up a programming language. Uh, there are a lot of questions when people ask, hey, do I need to learn how to code to be an ethical hacker or to be a penetration tester or just be in cybersecurity? There are a lot of different answers to that, and both of them are honestly kind of right. Some folks might say, no, you don't have to. Some people say, yes, you absolutely should. I would advocate you're going to be so much stronger with it. Uh, so the question is then, I'm sure a lot of you might ask, okay, what? Yes, which one? Which one? Which one? Yeah. So let me answer this in, in twofold, if that's okay. Yeah. The knee-jerk reaction and what I, I, I know a lot of people will echo uh, is that Python is a fantastic and fan and one. No lie. Python was the first thing that I thought about uh, because it's fairly simple and easy to pick up. It's something you can learn if you aren't going to be programming day to day. It, it's something simple that you could always go back and refresh your mind on. But depending on what you do in cybersecurity, you may need to learn some more advanced languages. Let's see what he says. Wonderful language to really get the ball rolling. Uh, it's easy yeah. to read. It's easy to write. You can rapidly just crank out code to prototype and develop things. Uh, and it can do so much. It has wonderful documentation, so you can kind of read and find a lay of the land. And it has so many different integrations to do so much stuff with already existing software. Whether you're interested in artificial intelligence or machine learning, etc. Uh, maybe if you're, I don't know, interested in the whole blockchain craze. I don't know exactly where, where Python might land in that, you, but... It'll still teach you the programming concepts. It'll teach you the fundamentals of, hey, this is a variable. This is a function. This is a loop. This is a conditional. And you need to know that. You absolutely do. Yeah. Uh, the second part, though, the kind of kicker to that answer, if that's all right. Uh, Python is a scripting language, which yeah. means it's interpreted, which means there's, an, there's another program kind of written in the background reading your code as if it were a script to act out on stage and then performing those actions and going and doing those things. Excuse so me. you aren't a first class citizen in that realm, right? You're kind of, hey, secondhand, your code is being executed by something else. It's you can make a, a lot of people angry, but I know what you mean. <laughs> All right. No, I, I definitely agree with him. Uh, I would never call myself a coder or the best at coding because I know how to do Python. People would laugh at me. And so he's right. We can we can cut that <laughs> off. Sorry. No, 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 no. We're going to keep it going. Uh, I would think if you're looking for a compiled language, if you're looking for something that you can have a lot more control over what's happening, some people might say, hey, learn C or C++, yeah. which is a great answer. I would venture that right now the new hotness is Golang or the Go programming language. It's yeah. crazy fast. It has so much concurrency, ability to do multiple things at once. Um, and it gives you the same expressiveness that Python does, but the same power and core functionality that C or C++, some of those lower lang languages do. It can cross compile and easily be, you know, ran on Windows or Linux or Mac. Uh, I would really advocate for Golang as something to pick up when you're first getting started. That's interesting. I think I might have heard of Go programming language vaguely, maybe on Twitter or on LinkedIn. This makes a good poll for LinkedIn tomorrow. But having a programming language 
on your resume, on your belt that you know how to do does make you look attractive in a job search. But sometimes what happens is they try to stick to make you code all the time if that's something that you don't want to do. So some people don't even tell people they know how to code because they end up doing all these things that they don't want to do like developing and programming things. Sometimes they don't want to do that. So just be, you know, depending on what you want to do, be a little bit apprehensive on how good you say you are doing something. But yeah, let's uh let's skip around. Let's see what this is. Uh, he has do something else before that. Okay, we'll see what he says. Let's go. Let's go right back to the beginning. Um, I think in the past you've recommended this. So, you know, would you do Network Plus? Would you do um, like learn about operating systems? What do you need to learn before programming, or would you just go straight into programming and then do something else after that? So, like, kind of what is your path, like, or steps that you would take? You know, if I was starting out. Yeah, so in my opinion, and it could be wrong, right? Just again, my kind of John Hammond insight. I think you are going to have a little bit more fun, you know, learning the ropes with the programming language first. That's not to say networking and IP addresses and subnets and routers and all that are, are you, that's still absolutely necessary and you still need to learn them. Um, but I have to think that will, that will come when you start to play with maybe some more experiments you could do in programming languages. Hey, can I, can I write something that will be able to test connectivity between a computer that I have sitting over here in the corner and another computer? Well, then you'll naturally start to learn the lingo of IP addresses and subnets, et cetera. What can talk to. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, he's doubling down on sticking with programming first because most of the, even the software applications and everything else we use were programmed by somebody and has, all the different terms that we like to use in the background. So, so far, so good. I can't really find anything to disagree with. Um, he's on recommended resources. Let's see what he says about capture the flags. Let's go. Oh, no, now you now let me ask you your the one that I'm pretty sure you would recommend. What about like uh, CTFs or Hack the Box and Try Hack Me? Would you would you recommend that after learning a programming language, or would you do it concurrently? I'm just trying to think. You know, like, okay, I need to learn Python. Um, but Python can be like applied to data science, could be applied to a million different things. Um, so would, are you still a big advocate of CTF or have you changed your mind this year? No, so I, I am absolutely a big advocate and proponent for capture the flag. Yep. Um, capture the flag or CTF really takes computer science and cybersecurity and a lot of technical material and makes it into a game. It, it turns it into a sport or a puzzle or an activity, and it makes it fun because you have small challenges or tasks that you can work through at your own pace uh, and, and you really kick the tires and test your chops. Like, hey, am I learning everything that I... And I also think CTS would be good things to add on a resume. Um, not for sure what I would call the section. It would probably be like activities or maybe related. I don't know. I'll have to look that up for you guys. But saying you participate in like X amount of capture the flags and even though you're a newbie looks very good if you're trying to do certain roles. Let's say you were trying to go be red team or blue team. And now you say, well, you know what? I know how to attack a system and I know how to protect it. That's pretty good. Even if you don't have so much experience and a lot of professionals do CTF events. That's another way to network, to talk to somebody. And they might say, oh, you're what? Oh, we have an opening. I like your skills. You know, hit, give me your email address and everything. And you can apply to this later. So like I said, I have, I am going to research this, this guy uh, after this video because, you know, he hasn't said anything wrong. Uh, let's see. Okay. This should be a good one. Degrees. Let's go. Okay, so I've got to ask these questions, and you know, this is for um, for this year, and we've asked, I've asked you this stuff in the past. But what's very interesting about this discussion is you 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 blindsided me with your first answer. So that's good that you like if things have changed, degrees, certifications, recommended, not recommended. If so, which ones would you think is it required to to have degrees and certs in cyber? Uh tough question, and I know a very lot odd, of different yeah. sides to it. Uh, yeah. In just the John opinion, certifications help. They really do. Industry training, yeah. professional certifications, those will get your foot in the door when you're looking for a job, you're trying to start your career, you 
want to turn this passion into a vocation, that helps. Uh, yeah. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Same thing with a degree. Same thing with some formal education. Yeah. I will offer formal education and degree is not absolutely necessary. 100% facts. People like to get mad at my ebook. I break all three of these things down. I even bring in boot camps as well. Degrees are not necessarily needed to get into cybersecurity. Why? Because it doesn't show anything. Cybersecurity is a more of a show me what you can do field. They don't care about your certs. They don't really care about your degrees from wherever school you went to. When you get in the interview, they want to know what can you do? Can you prevent our data from getting uh, breached? Can you keep our system secure? Can you do all this? Can you use a SIM? Do you know how to set up Splunk? Do you know how to set up a cloud environment? Are you good at DevOps? Are you good at cloud security? Are you good at networking? Database. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Architecture, infrastructure, help desk. You name it. They want to know all that. System administration. So they don't really care about all that. It's a lot of people I work with that haven't been to school. I will tell you most of the time, people that go to school more often times not end up in management or upper management in you know, the day for whatever reason. I think it just has to do with that background of uh, knowing how to talk to people and type and write documents and things like that. So you absolutely do not need school. And look at he's back. That's, this, I should make this the thumbnail. I might try to make this the thumbnail. Some places that you talk to, maybe they'll be of the opinion that it is, but there's a large handful of others that are of a different opinion. And then, hey, if you haven't suffered the four or eight years in school and you don't have the you know pretty piece of paper and the receipt at the end of it, that's totally okay. We, we, we want to see your merit. We want to know your competency. Uh, what can you accomplish? That and listen, the reason why I'm not letting them talk and then I talk because then you say, oh, I'm just regurgitating what he says. So I try to pause when I hear him say something, add my piece and see on how many things we align with. So you know that I know what I'm talking about when I talk to y'all on this channel or on Twitter or on Instagram or LinkedIn or TikTok. So, you know. I know. 10 years in the game, baby. That's much more valuable to an employer. Uh, and oftentimes, you prove that with certifications. So that helps. Uh, if you aren't in a place to grab certifications, you can't kind of, hey, get the notch on the belt. I always tell people, show your work. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, you're, you're doing try hack me. You're working through hack the box. You're playing in CTFs. You have your personal product and project. Hey, he's right, man. We're 11 minutes in. I'm going to find two more sections. Let's see. Oh, this is a good one. Okay, this is a good one. He's going to the next one. Uh, recommended certs. This shall be interesting. Difficult question once again, John. Any certs that you would think beginners should look at? Um, any personal favorites? Ooh, this is a good talking point, actually, and if it's okay to, to go, go on for that it, tangent. Yeah. Um, everyone might say, if you want to be an ethical hacker or a penetration tester or any of the cool Hollywood stuff, right? <laughs> uh, they say, go after OSCP, the yeah. Offensive Security Certified Professional uh, exam and certification in that course. Uh, OSCP has a lot of mystique and lore to it because it it's sort of like this ominous thing, a holy grail to get your... Get started in security. Uh, there's been a very, very recent change. Yeah. Um, recent in that, hey, we've decided, or offensive security, right, that certifying body has said, the exam, the capstone and culminating challenge for you to get the certification is going to change in structure. Um, and it, they, they've gone and said, we feel that Active Directory, uh, Active Directory being the technology that kind of manages, hey, Windows realm environments between users and computers and groups and organizational units and all of that. Uh, you see Active Directory everywhere in the industry, 90% yeah. of businesses, 95. Like you, we, could, we could talk that high of a number. Uh, and if you're doing red team work, if you're doing a penetration test, that really is. That, that There's no lie. You're going to see Active Directory out in the real yeah. world. Uh, so I think it's a good thing that they've made that change, but it also might change your focus. Uh, if you want to get started in this and make it a career, 
hey, we're going to do a little bit of learning more in Windows and how it's deployed and used in enterprise environments. So are they making Active Directory like a big, big part of the cert now? Uh, yes. So um, in, in beginning of 2020, which I know is a few years back now, they had changed the... So judging from most of his talking points, I can possibly assume that he must be a red team or a penetration tester. Um, judging from that, that's what I'm just getting from this. He knows a lot about this stuff. The course material to have more inclusion of Active Directory and other scripting and things. Um, I think now as we enter 2022, they have changed the exam environment to better reflect that modification in the course. So that means we Active Directory is going to be a larger portion of the exam, so much so that it is almost necessary to pass the exam. Uh, you, you need, um, and if I get too in the weeds here. No, no, go for it, go for it. You need 70 points to pass out yeah. of a 100. Uh, and there are two pools of how you could gain points. There is a kind of classic original 60 point bucket where if you compromise a machine, another machine, another machine, cool. Okay, let's go right here. Um, so, um, okay, OSCP sounds like scary if I'm starting out. Is that the first search you recommend I go for? Or is there something before that? Now, I honestly would recommend to folks, hey, get your feet wet with something like Security Plus. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. was my first certification. This was my first certification. Listen, it's most the uh, basic thing. About 95% of people who are in InfoSec are going to say, yeah, uh, get a Security Plus. It's not going to make you a security professional, but it's going to give you a decent foundation of what cybersecurity, information security is all about. Let's keep on going. A lot of people, a lot of people really recommend the the the, the CompTIA Security Plus stuff. Um, what about like networking certs? Or do you, do you really? I mean, John, this is the thing. You've been doing this for a long time, and um, you know you've probably made mistakes on the on, along the way. Um, which are there any other certs that you would get, or would it be like Security Plus, uh, Pentest Plus, perhaps, and then go and do OSCP? Uh, do you want to talk around that or would you, like if you were starting today, this is you, uh, would you just jump straight to OCP? What, what, what would you think? So if I knew kind of what I know now, I yeah. would take Security Plus and yeah. then I would dabble with eLearn Security's uh, junior penetration tester. Um, yeah. That's the uh, EJPT, which is a practical cert. It's pretty cheap, pretty good. Uh, they have a lot of good practical certs over there, eLearn Security. Uh, shout out to them. I think you get like vouchers for half off their test if you subscribe to INE.com. So, yeah, let's get it. And then tackle OSCP. Uh, eLearn Security Junior Penetration Tester, or EJPT, um, is much more practical and hands-on, I believe, than, than Security Plus is, truthfully. But it's not mm -hmm. quite the shock and awe of OSCP, if that maybe that's a way to say it. Uh, it, it guides you a little bit more. It showcases, hey, some fundamental techniques uh, and stuff to really crawl, walk, run in this, I guess, section here. I, I don't know how EJPT is truthfully doing. I think, so I know there's some... All right, so I'm going to... All right, so I'm going to end that right there, man. Um, so even though I said... 2022 cybersecurity roadmap. I would say 2022 penetration cybersecurity roadmap. So I probably would name it how to be a penetration tester in 2022. Um, good video, all solid information. Nothing he said was wrong. Uh, he's using, I can tell he's using years of experience, and he was not trying to just use this type of lexicon to be super smart through the whole time some more normal conversations so shout out to them i'm going to have a link in the description hopefully uh, you can find out more about him i'm definitely going to research him he uh definitely is a knowledgeable guy but uh hopefully you enjoyed this video uh, i'm up turning them out man um, it's what 12 or one o'clock right now i don't even know what time it is but hey shout out to y'all you know it's another one hey let's get textual